the National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The Cactus Pear. It is 4 p.m. the afternoon of March 28, 1947. Robert Coots, a new hand on the Triangle Ranch, is repairing a fence on the southeast range. He stops as a rider approaches. Oh, oh boy, oh! Howdy, Brack. Don't howdy me, Coots. Well, I see you finally got my job. I got a job because there was one open. If you left it open, that's your worry, I reckon, not mine. You've been making up to the old man trying to get me fired ever since you came into this country. That ain't so, and you know it. I've been looking for work, yeah. But you didn't get fired on my account. You got sacked because you can't leave a bottle alone. Sounds like you're calling me a liar. I ain't calling you anything. I'm just telling you. Now, how about clearing off? You telling me to clear off this range? All right, I'll get... But before I do, I'm going to whip your tail, Coots. You better not try it, Breck, because you ain't about to whip my tail. Oh, no, ain't I? No! Hey, you ain't! Hey, yo. Now, clear off, like I told you. Don't come back. Ain't going to be no need for me to come back. Put that shotgun down! Get away from me! Get away! Here's the other barrel, for good measure. All right, boy! Come on, get up! Get up! The body of ranch hand Robert Coots was discovered by the owner of the ranch next day when he rode out to search for the missing rider. He summoned the sheriff, and the sheriff called for the assistance of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. You say you spotted the buzzards this morning, Mr. Golf? Yeah, yeah, and then I found Coots. From the look of him, he must have been shot sometime yesterday. Thought I heard a shotgun yesterday afternoon. Should have rode out then. Why didn't you? Well, uh, Sheriff, you know, we've been having a time with the coyotes and mountain cats lately. I just figured one of my hands must have spotted one and cut loose. Coots was fixing a break in the fence, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Might have known something was wrong when Coots didn't come back to the ranch last night. The uh, spot's just up ahead where my deputy's standing. Yeah, I can see the body now. Anybody been stealing cattle around here lately, Sheriff? Oh, a few head now and then, Chase. Nothing big. Coots might have run into somebody doing it, though. Might have. Uh, here we are. Oh, oh, oh Charlie. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, Howdy, yeah. Sheriff. Ranger. Uh, hi there. Hi there. Yeah. Tie the horses off the fence here. I don't want them tramping around near the body. Good no, idea. Right. Uh, Coots with you a long time, Mr. Galt? No, Ranger, no. Hired him on less than a week ago. He was new around here, Chase. Only been here about a month, all told. You ever say where he came from? Yep. Yep, over around Marfa. Hit with both barrels, Jace. Once through the stomach, once through the head. Yeah. I was on the ground when the second charge hit him, though. Look, some of the shot clipped the grass. Yeah. yeah. Killer's horse stopped here, too. Looks like. Yeah. Coots must have had a fist fight with the man who killed him. How do you figure that, Jace? A little dried blood on the grass here, scuffle marks, and some of the blades pressed down as though somebody had been lying here. Yeah. Coots was shot, though. Might be his blood, you know. No. With his wounds, he was killed instantly. He didn't move 15 feet and then back again after getting blasted like that. Come on. All right. Hey, what you looking for? 
Horse moved off this way. Prince mixed right in with some of your herd. They were grazing around here and then took off mighty sudden. See here where they dug in to get started? Yeah, Yeah. that could mean a cattle thief, all right, chasing the stock, Jace. We'll find out. Let's get back to the horses and follow this trail. All right. This is far enough. Whoa, Chark. Whoa, Whoa, hold up. Hold up. Whoever it was, he wasn't trying to steal cattle. He was following the herd tracks so the trail of his horse wouldn't stand out clear. Uh, I don't see how you can tell that. Herd moved uprange toward the mesa. Anybody stealing them would have been driving them to the south fence where the state road is. Have to get them to a truck to get them away. Yeah, but what made them run then, Jace? A shotgun must have stampeded them. If they'd been driven, someone would have left marks where they cut out to get away from the rider. And the rider would have left tracks cutting after them. Ah, I see what you mean. But shouldn't we keep on trailing them, though? Yeah, but not this way. He was headed for rocky ground near the mesa, trying to lose anybody who might follow him. He's smart. I don't get your plan. Well, he was careful leaving here after he killed a man. He mightn't have been so careful riding in before he killed. We'll backtrack the trail he took getting here and might tell us where he came from. That makes sense, Jace. Let's go. Hey, up, boy. Uh, Ranger, can I have the body picked up by the funeral house now? Yeah, but even an autopsy isn't going to tell us much. Oh, I thought you could tell a lot from the shot that killed somebody. That uh, ballistic stuff, you know. Not so much with a shotgun. Barrels are smooth bore. Don't leave rifle marks, but... Hey, hold it. What'd you find, Ranger? These. Empty 16-gauge shotgun shells. Killer might have ejected them here to reload his shotgun in case he ran into trouble. Hmm? Well, can you tell anything with those? If we find the gun they came from, we might be able to match the way the hammer hits the shell. Yeah, if we find the shotgun. Every rancher and cowpoke in the county must have one. The sheriff and I backtracked on the approach the killer had used to get to the Triangle Ranch owned by Galt. But we came to a dead end. Well, Chase, guess this is as far as we go. Can't follow him on pavement or the gravel road shoulder. I rode out from town. It's too bad. I was hoping he'd come from a ranch someplace. Would have narrowed us down to one spot. Not much we can do now, except and go around examining shotguns. One other thing first. A couple of deep tracks in that ditch off the road. Uh, must have had rain here recently. Yeah, day four yesterday. That's why he left such a clear print there yesterday, then. I want to get a kit from my radio car and drive back here. What for? Take a couple of photographs of that print... Make a plaster impression of it. Help us to identify the horse if we find him. We took the cast and headed for town. To check every horse in the territory would have been impossible, so I had to gamble on a shortcut. Howdy, Ranger. Sheriff. Howdy. Howdy. Hey, you mind dropping that hammer a minute and taking a look at this? Sure thing. Hey, what is it? Plaster cast, shoe print of a left hind hoof. You remember making a shoe like this, Ed? Uh, common plate, sir. It was caulked or something I might remember, but I don't know. I know it's a tough one, but all shoes are a little different. Wear in different places. Hoofs have to be fitted for slightly different shapes. That's true, all right. If I come across that shoe now, after seeing the cast, I might recognize it. Good. I'm going to leave this cast here. If anybody brings in a horse to be shod and the left hind hoof looks like the cast, don't touch it until you call us. Be right glad to help. Keep my eyes open. Any other blacksmiths around here, Sheriff? Oh, not for over 50 miles. We going looking for that gun now? You start on it. I'm going to pay another visit to the Triangle Ranch. I want to talk with Mr. Galt again. <laughs> uh, finish here in a minute, Ranger. Uh, hey, Joe. Yeah? Turn on the rest of the irrigation pumps, will you? Okay. That's fine. Good. Uh, what was it you wanted to know? I asked you if Coot seemed nervous, like he'd been running away from something or somebody he was afraid might catch up with him. Uh, no, I can't say he did. All he was anxious about was finding a job. Seemed like good workers, so when I had an opening, I took him on regular. Oh. One of your hands leave? 
me? No, no. You say I, I had to fire a pope named Harvey Breck. Fired him, huh? Why? Uh, drinking, making trouble in the bunkhouse, not doing his work. Did this Breck know Coots? Yeah, just haven't seen him around. How did Breck take it when you told him he was fired? Well, he was kind of drunk. Cussed me out a little. Is that all? Yep. yep. I paid him off, give him an extra month like I do with any hand I have to let go. He seemed all right after that. You know where this Breck is living now? Yeah, here he's bunked up in one of them deserted Dobie huts by the old Quicksilver mine. Roads washed out, though. All the huts are empty since mine stopped operating. Uh, why, Ranger? You gonna see him? I sure intend to. I went back through town and picked up the sheriff, and we rode our horses out to the abandoned mine. I've checked a hundred guns today, Jace. Every tough or near tough I could think of. No good, though, huh? No, no hammer marks like the one we're looking for. You fire the guns to get a test shell for comparison? Sure. But I swear none of them was the gun we want. I kept the most likely ones and labeled them for you, though. Good. We can add one more when we test Breck's gun. And here are the shacks now. Oh, boy. Oh, charcoal. Ooh. Must be that one. Little smoke's coming up the chimney. There's Breck. Heard us coming. You fellas looking for... Oh. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Breck. Ranger wants a few words with you. Okay. Mind if we come inside? All right. I reckon you know that somebody killed the man who took your place over at the Triangle Ranch. Yes, yeah, so I heard. Happened Tuesday afternoon. Where were you? I was right here. Anybody who says I wasn't is a liar. Nobody said anything yet. Where's your shotgun? I don't have a gun. You don't, huh? And where's the gun you cleaned not long ago? I didn't click. Don't tell me you didn't. This oily rag in the corner says you did. This rag was used for cleaning a gun and nothing else. Better get the gun, Brick. We want to see it. It's under the bunk. Sixteen gauge, double barrel. Yeah, loaded too. Hey, let me have it a minute. Match these with the shells you've been carrying, Sheriff. Hey, wait a minute. Shut Are up, you... Rick. Twins, all right, Sheriff. No doubt about these matching. Breck, we found these shells on the Triangle Ranch. Hammer marks match yours. And Coots was killed with a shotgun. Not that gun. Sure, you found shells from it on the Triangle Ranch because I worked on the Triangle Ranch, remember? You get laughed out of court with evidence like that. I fired a hundred shots out there. At coyotes. The story could hold, Jace. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Because there's one other thing, Breck. We're all going to take a ride into town after I check the shoes on your horse. Now, that's real interesting, Ranger. Because if we're riding into town, you'll be packing me behind you. I don't own a horse. are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Now we continue with tonight's case, The Cactus Pear, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Breck had us stopped and he knew it. His story about the coyotes and the empty shotgun shells covered him, and we didn't even have enough to take him in. We left him and headed back for town. If he is the one, Chase, we're going to have a time proving it. Gun would have made a strong case against anybody who hadn't worked on the ranch, but he can alibi that. Yeah. You got something on your mind, Chase. What is it? He swore he hadn't been on the Triangle Ranch in a week since Galt fired him. Yeah. We can't prove otherwise. I don't know. If he did shoot at a coyote, it must have been before Galt fired him. That means those empty shells would have been lying out in the ground when it rained two days ago. Cardboard portion of the shells don't look like they'd been wet. The sun could have dried them out after the rain, Chase. Yeah, there's some metal on the shell, too. I'm going to send those shells through to the lab at Austin. You think they'll be able to tell if they've been out in the rain or not? Metal gets wet. There's got to be some oxidation. 
Lab will know whether there is or not. If there isn't, we'll mean the shells were fired in the past two days. Yeah, but he'd still stick to his story, Jace. You know how a jury is with scientific evidence. A little leery of it sometimes. I know we'll need more. I wasn't thinking of the shells as jury evidence. I was thinking of them as a time saver for us. Oh. If he's telling the truth, we'll have to start all over. But if he's lying, we'll have to trip him up. I sent the shells through to Austin, and while I waited for a report, I drove to Coot's old home at Marfa. He'd been well-liked there. No reason for anybody to follow him and kill him. It was a routine check, and on the way back, I got my report from Austin. KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead. Have report from Austin Lab on exhibits submitted by Unit 10 for examination. Ready for it. Lab reports slight oxidation probably caused by brief exposure to normal night moisture. No evidence that shells were thoroughly soaked, though. No indication of such exposure in lab report. 10-4, Unit 10 clear. KDXA Austin. back south as hard as I could. When I got near the quicksilver mine, I took charcoal out of the trailer and rode onto the shack Breck had been using to make sure he was still around. Oh, boy. Oh, charcoal. Breck, open up. I want to talk to you. All right. What do you want this time? I just want to make sure you're still around, that's all. Well, you see me, don't you? Yeah. I see something else, too. Looks like you've been packing a few things in there. That's my business, not yours. I'll make it my business if you try to leave this county. Now, look, Ranger, you've got nothing on me. You'd have taken me in before. If I want to move out of here, I reckon I can move. You try it, and you'll hit the county jail so fast it won't even give your spurs time to rattle. Yeah, you're talking big, but you ain't got a charge to hold me on. There ain't no law against shooting coyotes. No, but there's a law against moving into a shack without the owner's permission. The mining company give you the right to live here? Yeah. That isn't going to be hard to check on. All right, then, Ranger, go back to town and check. Because until you do and get a warrant, you got no right in here. Have you? Okay, Brick. I'll be back. And you better be here. I got back to town as fast as I could. I had to have a minor charge to hold him on. As I pulled up to the sheriff's office, I found out I wasn't going to need it. Stay in the car, Jace. Why? What's up? You got here just in time. We're just heading for my car. Let's move. Which way? Straight ahead. Blacksmith shop. He found the horse we've been looking for. Oh, boy. Ho, ho, ho there. Ho. Yeah. Here, Ranger. Look. Just like the cast. Ho, oh. oh, boy. You see this nick in the left hind shoe? This nail bent a little? Same as the impression on the cast. That's it, all right. Who owns him? <sighs> Ranger, you're probably going to eat me out for this, but he's mine. Yours? You mean to say you couldn't recognize a shoe you fitted to one of your own horses? Well, that's a trouble, Ranger. I didn't show him. I only bought him a month ago, and I was just going to put new plates on him for the first time now. That's how come I just spotted the shoe. What were you doing out on the Triangle Ranch when Coots was killed? But, Ranger, I wasn't out there. Your horse was, last Tuesday. But I wasn't riding him. I loaned him out. You better tell us who you loaned him to. Well, I let Harvey Breck use him. What? Breck? Well, well, my wife can tell you. I'll call her. You don't have to call her. Come on, Sheriff. Let's go. We stopped for the sheriff's horse, loaded him in the double trailer with charcoal, and then headed for the mine. We left the car at the washout, unloaded the horses, and rode to the adobe shack Breck was using. We got enough to take him in now, Jace. If he's still here, he was packing to leave. Look, he hasn't left yet. There's the hut he was using. Crack a light under the door. We're on time, then. Not much to spare. It's a cinch he figures to move out tonight. He won't move now. Stop here. Move, oh, move, charcoal. Oh. He isn't going to come easy, Sheriff. Watch out for that shotgun. He wants gunplay. He can have it. And we'll know when he answers the door. 
All right, Brack, open up. We know you're in there, Brack. Now, come on. Maybe waiting in there so he can nail us with that shotgun if we bust in. We can wait out here for you, Brick. Yeah. That light in there could keep us waiting all night if he's gone. You mean it's a trick to slow us up? We'll find out. Keep that door covered while I kick it in. Right. It was empty. Breck had made his getaway. We went over the ground outside to get his direction. It led toward rugged country, and we followed as fast as we could on horseback. Cutting back and forth to pick up his marks. Ah. Went up into these hills, Sheriff. We made some time. It was easy to trail this far, and he's on foot. Yeah, but we're going to be on foot, too, now. Why? He's headed for the border, Jace. Rio Grande's that way, but no horse can take this country between here and there. Oh, boy. Oh, Charcoal. How far is it to the river? Forty miles of country the devil won't have, and we'll have to cover every inch of it on foot. Well, that's what he's doing. Come on, let's go. Hmm? We must be close to him by... Hey, look, Sheriff. That's him. Top on the ridge. Get to cover under that lid. Huh? You better hide and stay there. I got you pinned down. Hobble the horses so they can move off and graze later. Oh, we're going to get to him. Long way up that ridge and we'll be moving right into his sights. You go around that way. All right. Crawl and hug whatever cover you can find. I'll go the other way and see if we can't circle in behind him. slowly, inches at a time, up the side of the treacherous slope. It took almost an hour, and it was just what Breck wanted. All right, don't move. Is that you, Jace? Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Jace, oh, he isn't here. Oh, of course he isn't. I should have figured his play. Only reason he fired from up here was to trick us into giving him time. Oh, sure it was. He's ahead of us with a night to cover him. We don't have horses to give us an edge anymore. Now, let's see if we can pick up his trail. But, Jace, if we're going into this, we're going to need water. No time to go back for it now. We'll have to get it as we find it. If we find it. He's headed this way. Come on. We'll have to keep trail cutting. And it's going to be plenty rough. It's like the sheriff said. Country the devil wouldn't have. Breck was piling up a lead with every hour of the night. We have to cover two miles to his one, Jace. Every time we lose the trail, he gains ground. Uh, can't be helped. We get to the top of this ridge, and it may be the wrong one again, like the last two we climbed. Uh, well, daylight in a couple of hours. We'll be able to spot his tracks better then, and we can... Move faster. Maybe we better rest until then. Can't. I'm counting on him having to rest. That's the only time we can make up on him. I reckon you're right, Chase. But it'll be another day and night of this without a wink, and no guarantee we catch him at that. He may go any direction to make us cross. You want to rest a few hours while I go on ahead? If you're going, I'm going. Good. Come on. If we only knew which... Hold it, Sheriff. What? Scrub between the rocks. Here, throw your light on it. All right. <laughs> Look. Barely grown in the earth between the rocks. Yeah. Roots ripped out a little and exposed. Yeah. Fresh, too. <laughs> Grabbed the scrub to pull himself up. Good. Means we aren't climbing this and for nothing this time. No. We better keep on climbing. <laughs> Almost 24 hours. Getting dark again, Jace. Yeah. And more mountains ahead. Hey, wait. You lose them? No. No, cut over this way. Something on the ground by that cactus patch. Yeah. Dug for water again and hit it, too. Still wet. Yeah. <laughs> Dig a little. Get a drink for yourself. Knows the country all right. Never misses. Seems to know just where to dig if there's even a mouthful of water. 
What's it doing over there? He ate here. Rested, too. Cactus pear has been cut and skinned. Sun hasn't dried the skins out yet. He's only an hour or so ahead now. His tracks show he's slowing down. Still going fast enough to make that river sometime tonight, though. We'll be there, too, then. <laughs> Little water running up in this hole now, Chase. You better take him half full. You first. Thanks. Then let's move. <laughs> We pressed as hard as we could, but he was getting closer to the river. We're going towards Santa Elena Canyon, Chase. The river's narrow there. How far? Less than half a mile away. Got to run then, Sheriff. Can you make it? Try. Look. His shotgun. Couldn't haul it any further. Lightening up to make his last run. I, I think I heard something ahead. Keep going. <laughs> we heard him in front of us. And we broke through the brush at the river. He was just wading in. Stop, Brack! I'll get him. Don't make me put a bullet in you, Brack. Yeah, you... You ain't taking me. Oh, yes, I Don't am. Let go. Let go. I'm over the border. Not hey. while you're still in the river. Let go, I said. I... Oh. You get him. Yeah. But you're going to have to help me. Drag him to shore. A few more feet. He'd have made it. Yeah. He needed just a few more seconds. Just about as long as it took to eat a cactus pear. Harvey Breck was tried and convicted for the murder of Robert Coates. His sentence, 99 years. And now, here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. When the Allies invaded Normandy in World War II, they got an idea as to how far the fame of the Texas Rangers had spread. Both surrendering Nazis and liberated free French said they knew the war was as good as over because the Texas Rangers had landed. Of course, it was the heroic American Ranger troops who made the landings, but nothing could convince the Nazi war prisoners that these were not the terrible Texans they'd heard about in many American legends. Good night, folks. See you same time next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of... The Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the MGM production Stars in My Crown. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Wilms Herbert, Tom McKee, and Gerald Moore. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Monday means music on NBC. Tomorrow night... The Voice of Firestone presents a selection of melodies in the Christmas spirit with Metropolitan Opera star Jerome Hines, a soloist. The NBC Symphony brings you another one-hour concert featuring works by Vivaldi and Beethoven under the baton of the brilliant young conductor Guido Cantelli. Stay tuned for the $64 question with more good times on NBC.